Hi guys, uh, thank you for joining me again and I'm actually going to just jump right into how to do this process because there is a lot to cover uh, and hopefully I don't forget anything. First off, I'm going to explain what we're going to use in this process is Egyptian Blue Lotus. This is a flower that has been used for thousands of years uh, in connection with um, ritual work and ceremony. In ancient Egypt, they used it because they believed it helped facilitate contact during ritual with higher intelligences. Uh, by higher intelligences, what we mean now is what a lot of people call our higher self. These are elements of our own consciousness and psyche, <clears throat> um, which we want to integrate into our normal everyday consciousness. Uh, that is a whole separate video in itself, and that's something that we are going to go into. But for right now, what I want to explain is the actual technical process for making a uh, double extraction tincture. The reason it's called double extraction is because two of the ways that we extract essences and chemicals and minerals and everything else from a plant is using either alcohol or water. By alcohol, I mean something that is at least 80 proof. Not rubbing alcohol, but like uh, vodka. Brandy is traditional. I actually like tequila, like a clear tequila, just because it's, um, I enjoy the flavor of it. A lot of people don't, which is why they use vodka, because it, it's kind of flavor neutral. Uh, but whatever it is, um, you use alcohol because, uh, Number one, it pulls every, all the essence out of the plant. And I'll show you what I mean by that. This is a tincture that I had started using rose. This, this material you see in the bottom is crushed up rose petals. The alcohol was actually clear whenever we started. And you can see now it's a pink or reddish color because it has drawn uh, the essence of the roses into the alcohol itself. So... But the alcohol also has a really, really long shelf life. You can use this for years and it won't go bad. It won't decay, no bacteria forms in it, things like that. Um, with tougher plants, uh, you know, harder plants, which is, uh, you know, Egyptian blue lotus is not really, really hard, but it is harder than roses. You can use water also to extract some of the material from the plant that alcohol does not get out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put it through the process of removing everything we can possibly remove from it with alcohol. This kind of corresponds to whenever you're doing your ritual work, your daily ritual work. In magic, you're cautioned against what they call a lust for results. What a lust for results mean is that you are focused on the end result. You're focused on getting through the ritual. You're focused on what you think you're going to get from it, whether it's internal or external or whatever it is. You're focused not on what you're doing at the moment, but sometime in the future. Well, one of the reasons we're cautioned against lust for results is you want to focus all of your attention on what you're doing in order to get every bit of knowledge and wisdom and experience and energy that you possibly can out of that moment, out of that experience, out of that process. And you can't do that if you're looking towards the future. So we start with alcohol to once again draw everything, we're going to, through this process, draw everything we possibly can out of these, the plants. So when you get your Egyptian blue lotus, uh, you tear all the petals off, kind of just grind them up in your hands. Some people like a mortar and pestle, but these are act Egyptian blue lotus. The core of the plant is actually so hard that a mortar and pestle, uh, for me anyway, I have arthritis in my hands, so I can't really grind it up. So I just shred it up uh, using my hands and you want to put it in a jar. Um, whenever you put the material in a jar, you're going to then use your alcohol to pour over it. Now you want it completely covered up. You don't want any of the plant material sticking up out of the alcohol because if you do, the part that's sticking above the alcohol uh, can form mold and bacteria on it and then your tincture is no good. So you want it completely covered. Once the material is covered with the alcohol, you can put, if you have a metal top to your jar, you can put a piece of uh, wax paper up under it because the alcohol can actually corrode the top of the metal lid if you leave this in here for years and it has a shelf life of years. Uh, so some people like to put the, the wax paper under there. I was out of wax paper so this is actually uh, some saran wrap I put under and then a coffee filter on top and then I put the top on. 
Another important thing, and this is really important, always label. Write what you have in here and the date you put it in here. Because if you're working on a bunch of different tinctures, uh, sometimes you'll forget which one is which, and you end up with a bunch of dusty jars that you don't know what's in, can't use, and you've wasted time, money, and energy. Labeling is very important. You're going to, once you have this in here, you're going to let it sit for a month. Now, there is a step in this process if you want to follow a traditional uh, method. You want to keep this heated for 40 days. Um, and by heated, I don't mean on a stove, not a big heat. You could have like a heating pad set on a very low temperature and set it on there. Or you could, uh, if you have access to a hot water heater in your closet, you can go into the closet and put it on the hot water heater. All it needs is a very gentle warmth to aid in the fermenting process. Some people don't use that at all. A lot of people who use herbs just do it like this. Uh, but what you're going to do is once a day for 40 days, you are going to take this and just shake the hell out of it. Shake it as hard as you can. What you're doing is breaking up the plant material and allowing the alcohol to saturate into it as much as possible. Now, when I first put this in here just a couple of days ago, this was completely clear, and you can see already how much it's pulling from the plant. You're going to let that set aside for 40 days. After 40 days, this is when we start the water extraction process. You're going to uh, drain this. You're going to strain all of the plant material out. And you can use like a tea strainer or cheesecloth, anything in that vein that's made for straining things. You pour the alcohol through it into a separate container so that you have just the alcohol that is completely saturated with the plant material. You take the plant material and you put it in a pot on the stove. You're going to need two gallons of water. Uh, if you have a big enough pot, you can pour one whole gallon in at one time. If you don't, you're going to have to pour some in as you go, and, as, and, and you want to keep it boiling, keep it simmering so the water will evaporate. And as it's evaporating, you can pour more from the gallon. But after you've went through that, you've boiled this plant uh, through an entire gallon of water, and you want to boil it down till you get about two cups of, of water, and then you're going to take the plant material and the water in the pot and put it into a container. Now make sure it's not a container that is that you fill all the way to the top because you're going to freeze this. And if it's completely filled, whenever you freeze it, it will explode. Um, if you want to leave enough room that it can expand inside the container. What's happening is not only would it make the container explode if it were too full, but what it's doing to the plant material is since the water is saturating it, whenever it freezes, it explodes the cell walls of the plant, allowing you to get even more material out of it. Stuff you couldn't get any other way. So let that freeze overnight. The next day you take it out, let it thaw, put it back in the pot, and begin boiling it again and pouring your second gallon of water. Once you've boiled it until you only have, once again, I would say probably between a cup and two cups of water left uh, in your pot, you're going to pour it through a strainer. And what I use for a strainer are coffee filters, like cone-shaped coffee filters. You can get them at any grocery store. And you just put them in a, in a jar and you can attach it, you know, with rubber bands so that it doesn't slip through. And you pour the pot with the water and the plants through here. It, the water will go into here. Your plant material will be in the top. You can then throw that plant material away. You don't need it anymore. You have extracted through alcohol and water every ounce that there is in this plant to extract. What you're left with is just going to be dead material that you toss. Uh, then you take that water, the little bit of water with the condensed, it'll be like you made tea out of the plant. And you want, when you boil all the water away, you're left with a very condensed uh, tea-like material. That you will then take and pour back into just the alcohol. So the end product, what you will have is a tincture made of both alcohol extract and water extract from the plant. Uh, this will be an incredibly potent, powerful tincture. Um, and I guess that's actually about it. Uh, whenever, you, whenever you get ready to use it, what you're going to want to do is put it in little bottles. And again, you want to label your bottle so that you don't forget what it is. 
Whenever you use it, what you can do is, you can do it in, in a couple of ways. One is just take it straight into the tincture and put it under your tongue. When you put it under your tongue like that, it actually uh, goes directly into your bloodstream. It doesn't even go through your digestive system. It's absorbed directly into your mouth, sublingual they call it. So it has a really, really fast acting and powerful effect. Uh, or you can just put several drops in a glass of sparkling water and drink it like that. It takes longer to get into your system like that because it has to go through the digestive process instead of directly into your bloodstream under the tongue. Uh, but that's all there is to the process. It is time consuming, but I mean, when you really get down to it, it's really easy. And for me personally, I really enjoy doing it. So I'm hoping you will too. Uh, I am going, if you join me on Patreon, I am going to write this process out step by step in case I've left anything out while I'm talking. So you'll be able to uh, read it and print it out and, and have it next to you so that you can see as you're going through it. Uh, but I guess that's it otherwise. I hope you guys are doing very well, that you're safe, that you're happy uh, and healthy. Thank you so much for joining me again, and I will talk to you back here soon. Bye-bye.